Welcome and thank you for joining us again at Pedalling Past, the channel that takes you back in time on a bike. Um, I'm Sarah and this is Guy and this morning we're in the lovely historic town of Hexham. So we're right alongside the River Tyne here. If we look over behind Sarah, we've got the cathedral in the background set up in about 670 by uh, Bishop Wilfred, who had been all over the place, actually. Quite a travelled man. Lindisfarne, Canterbury, France, Ripon. Rome, and then back to Ripon. And then he uh, came to the uh, Banks of the Tyne to set up Hexham Abbey. That's it. Hexham Abbey, not a cathedral, isn't it? Crikey, we're going wrong already. Anyway, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, because it's on near the Scottish borders, we're going to be heading north. It's a 70-kilometre route, so quite a long uh, trip, this one, with a 1,000 metres of climbing. So our toughest challenge to date. Uh, so we've packed plenty of sandwiches and Sarah's got the Tunnock's tea cakes because obviously we're heading towards Scotland. And uh, yeah, what do you need to know about Hexham? Uh, very, very busy history. Uh, quite a lot of battles here. Uh, the Duke of the Lancastrian army was uh, beheaded here after he lost to the Yorkists. I didn't even know they came this far up. Uh, William Wallace sacked the city. Robert the Bruce. Uh, gave it a kicking at times as well, but somehow it survived all that and was still a very prosperous, uh, particularly for the tanny, tannery uh, business. Just went past a pub down the road there called the Tannery, so very famous for its leather working. Obviously, sat here on the Tyne, it's a route uh, up into the borders and further across to uh, Carlisle in places anyway. And the route today, primarily, that's what we're doing. We're heading north up to Chester's Castle on Hadrian's Wall. Then we're going into the wilds of Wark Forest, into that there, Caledonia, where the uh, Romans didn't roam, but the Celts very much did. And then back to Vindolanda. Sarah's got plenty of facts ready about Vindolanda. <laughs> uh, the, you know, beautiful Roman fort there. And then back along the Roman road of Stangate into uh, Hexham again. Yeah, so, be a, it's, it's quite a long distance, this one. And yeah. It's an event. Well, it's an adventure for us. We don't really yes. know what we're getting into. Yes. Beyond the map, we've done a lot of mapping and we looked at the route profile. So come along with us and find out as much as we do. Yeah, it, it's going to be... We're all in this together, folks. <laughs> but uh, quick essential information for Hexham. Uh, we've just parked down at the bottom. There's a long-stay car park down there that's free for the day. You can get here on the train uh, from Newcastle or you can even get the AD122 bus named after the foundation date of Hadrian's Wall, which I think is rather splendid. But, you know, supermarkets, leisure centres, uh, all sorts of shops, places to stay. Uh, you know, proper little busy town that's a great place uh, to stay over the weekend. We're going to stay the weekend here and really make the most of it. But time's ticking on. It is. Let's get started. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, mostly road, this one, uh, about 10% gravel. Uh, but it should be nice, easy rolling once we're up into the wilds of the hills. Let's roll. So we're rolling out through the remains of the old abbey now and down the hill. There's all sorts of historic buildings. You've got Hexham House there. You've got a 13th century jailhouse. You've got medieval courthouses. So uh, even when you're not on the bike, there's plenty of exploring to be done in Hexham as well. And the first part of the route is a cycle path and quiet road. Fabulous mill there, straddling this mill stream. So, nice, quiet. I mean, obviously all our pedalling past routes, we can try and keep the traffic to a minimum, and that's exactly what we've done here. So, we're following the National Cycle Network, number 72, out of town, past the football pitch. And we're actually on quite a lot of National Cycle Network routes, so, Keep an eye out for those blue sustenance signs with the little red numbers on as you're going round. Right, we've just gone over the Tyne again on the old bridge. And then we drop down past the boat side in on the outward leg. We actually share that first bit with the leg back in. So mind your heads under the bridge and then we're starting to climb up into the hills now. Lovely quiet lanes coming out of Hexham. But this is quite a farmy area and it's it's got working um, tractors and a lot of horses so be nice say hello and just make cyclists welcome as we've been cycling along there's so much history um, we're just getting into Chester's now and we've gone past Market Gardens and we've now found this lovely stable block which is self-catering accommodation it's called Warwick Hall 
Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just classic uh, peddling past, really. There's so much history in the countryside around here and everywhere we go in England. Right, so we've just pitched up at the uh, English Heritage Visitor Centre for Chester's Fort. So there's nice bike parking, there's a calf and loos, and of course there's Chester's Fort itself. It's a cavalry fort, so it's a base for 500 troops on horseback who, rather than kind of staying on the wall, they'd have been the raiding party, a sort of firefighting crew who went out basically where we're going, out into the forests and wilds of Caledonia to preemptively uh, deal with any trouble that might be heading towards the wall or any rebellions up country. And now we're actually in the Clayton Museum at Chester's. It's amazing. I mean, it's a grade two listed building in itself, but just full of all the artifacts and stonework that they found here at Chester's. And it's really interesting, all the different inscriptions of gods and the uh, building stones from different centuries uh, that have, you know, built part of the fort or part of Hadrian's Wall here. And it, it really brings home how diverse the kind of Roman military were. And, and also, you know, what a sort of broad society it was in terms of who they were worshipping. There's river gods, there's gods of war, there's from Germania, from the Netherlands, from Greece, all sorts going on here. It really was an amazing kind of multicultural cultural society up here on the wall. And now we're actually in the Roman bathhouse at Chester's. So come down right alongside the River Tyne. I don't know if you can see over there, but that's the old alignment at Hadrian's Wall. And there was a bridge across here in the Roman period as well. But you've got your steam room here in front of you. There's some amazing hypercore systems just over there. There's another warm room here. I mean, to be fair, from the look of pictures where we're going at Binderlander later, uh, there's kind of more exposed ruins, but the ones here suit very, very intact. You know, amazing depth of walls here and up at the fort as well. So definitely worth hopping off your bike and hopping into Chester's or galloping into Chester's, I should say, as it was a cavalry fort. And uh, there's a calf here as well, if you're already feeling like a coffee to keep you going. They've even got a gym with lockers for your clothes at the back end. <laughs> and this is the barracks where the cavalrymen and their horses stayed in the same buildings. I mean, to be fair, it's not that different to when Sarah moved in with me and had my bikes in the bedroom, really, I guess. And now we're into Charleford, site of the uh, Battle of Heavenfield between the Welsh and the Northumbrians, way back in 633 AD. Just shows that, you know, this area's got a lot of history besides the Romans. And now, we're into the village of Humshof, or apparently Humshaf, if you're really local. So here in the village of Humshaf, there was a paper mill that during the new poly Napoleonic Wars, they used to print fake French money. Uh, I think with the idea of causing economic crash. Don't know if it happened. There's a treat for historic miniature car fans. Answers and comments to what that is. Is that a Simca? No idea. But Don't yeah. know. What a cutie. <laughs> Not big on cars on pedalling past. We prefer bikes, but Credit where credit's due. <laughs> and now we're dropping down towards the Tyne again. And as you're riding along, keep your eyes peeled because there's loads of stuff that we're not showing you that's hidden because we want you to find it. Castle. And now we're climbing away from Humshoff, swung around over the Tyne again. Beautiful. Piece of landscape. And on the far side, there's Chollerton and Chip Chase Castle as well. If you want to spend some more time exploring places. Now we're in Simonburn, which is just one of those really lovely, idyllic little English hamlets. There is a tea room, it's closed today, but also there's a church called St Mungo's here. And just this lovely, unspoilt British countryside. Yeah, it's just, it's just really 
just really typical of this area. You know, there's just, we've passed so many things that Sarah and I have gone, oh, should we stop? Should we not? And it's just like, I think it's better, like Sarah said, I think it's better if you discover the places like this and just, you know, don't be afraid to go off the beaten track. Obviously, we've put this route together, but, you know, it's just a guideline. You know, always look about, explore, follow your curiosity. That's what this channel's all about. So we're climbing up into Oak Forest now, and it has been a bit of a haul, hasn't it, Mrs. K? Yes. Oh no, I'm not supposed to call you Mrs. K. Oh, it's yes, Sarah. It's Sarah. We got to, I got told off. Car up. For uh, being aggressively male and dominant for calling Sarah Mrs. K. So apologies for that, everyone. But what a beautiful area. Talk about wide open spaces and fantastic riding. We've got the whole world to ourselves. Walk Forest. Riding through Walk Forest is just a joy. I hope you can hear the bird song and the tarmac. Look at it, smooth as a baby's bum. And now we're rolling down into Stonehof the forestry centre of this area. And we've just stopped for our picnic in uh, Stonehof. So it's about 30k into the route. And actually, if you want to split this route into two, there's a campsite here as well, which has got wind turbine and solar power, keeping it nice and eco-friendly. But this whole area is the centre of a protected dark skies area. So you can see there's displays here about your constellations and what you can see around us at night. You know, it's obviously such a wild area. And this is the Stonehaw Stargazing Pavilion. It's also very suitable for sandwiches, isn't it, Mrs? Very nice. Very nice, Sarah reckons. And over here, don't know if you can see them, but this are the uh, Stonehaw totem poles, which uh, they just uh, just a local carpenter. Put three totem poles up, I think back in the early 90s. And uh, yeah, they refresh them every now and again. But uh, we'll be dropping down across the burn and uh, into the proper wild part of the ride now as we uh, head a bit further west and then drop down south to Hadrian's Wall itself. Sarah is giving me that look because I forgot to say the important thing. What did I forget to say, Sarah? That. It's very wise because it is so wild up here and tea rooms and stuff are here, but especially in winter, not always open. So make sure you've got plenty of provisions with you because there's not really a lot of places to get food otherwise. And you're going to get hungry. And also, because there's quite a lot of exposure up here in terms of weather, wild open spaces, take an extra layer, take a... I mean, if, if it's real... No, do you know what? If it's real dodgy weather, don't come up here because it'll be nasty. I'm not going to tell you to come and bring a survival bag. That's that's not what we're into. There's other routes you can do if you're into all that kind of thing. Just wrap up warm, take an extra layer with you, take some extra clothing with you and take waterproofs with you at all times because the weather can change up here, you know. We are properly up in the borderlands here. You'll have to watch out for this ford when the river's high. But we're lucky today. It's a bit of a splash. And when we say gravel... This is the sort of thing we mean, just slightly rocky, shaly tracks, but good cycling as long as you've got wide enough tyres and we've just done a big section of gravel out of Stonehoff. Unfortunately, it was really raining because Sarah said, oh, the weather's been lovely. So we didn't get much footage through there, but beautiful, wild section of gravel. Could have been anywhere in the world. That was remote and incredibly peaceful and foresty. But we're just, you know, we're still in England here. Just stop for a quick snack break. Just take in this beautiful wilderness view now. But if you look right over on that ridge line, that's Hadrian's Wall along the top. That's where we're going next. And here we are on Hadrian's Wall itself at Sill Rig. Incredible to believe those stones have been there for, well, it's 122 AD. So, 1900 years, 74 miles, all the way from coast to coast. Not all of it's stone, a lot of the western part of it. 
is uh, turf, but no, it is. It's it's you know it's Britain's Great Wall of China, if you know what I mean. But here, with those dramatic crags with the wall sat on top of them, and then that lake there. What an amazing place! I mean, even if it wasn't this incredible archaeology here. This would be a stunning place to visit. And, uh, what do you reckon, Sarah? The rainbow. Fantastic. Does the rainbow mean it's time for a pole bar or a calf stop? Oh, I could kill for a cup of tea. Let's do it then. Mm. Yeah. Right. Once brewed or twice brewed? I feel definitely twice. <laughs> I will explain that in a minute. <laughs> and just hiking some of the way along. Adrian's Wall from where we stopped at uh, Steel Rig there just sort of highlights what an incredible structure it is and there's you know there's a lot of debate still surrounding the sort of history and use of the wall you know I mean obviously it does have you know a semi-defensive wall but on the other hand it's relatively easy to get across if you're a raiding party I mean the bridge at Chester's obviously cuts out boat traffic but it's more kind of just a I mean, A, it's a massive flex that you've built this huge stone thing running right across the country. Now, that's going to make people sit up and think, even in the Pinkish tribes, uh, that, you know, they're not even used to stone buildings at this point. So that's a big old, you know, stamp of domination. But it's also interesting in that it's one of the first places where Rome kind of just went, yeah, do you know what? This is, this is as far as we're going. You know, we're not expanding beyond this area. I mean, eventually they did, they went up to the Antonine Wall, but, uh, you know, and it, and it comes and goes, you know, the occupation up here comes and goes, it, it kind of tails off for a bit during the second century, third century, and then comes back right in, in the third century, when the Picts really kick off north of the wall, and uh, they send more cavalry up here, and uh, uh, Housesteads, which is the fort just over there, that gets fully refurbed, gets a new garrison and uh, you know there's obviously a lot of activity amongst the uh, tribes north of here and uh, and you know the Roman garrison trying to keep them down so and then it's still active like I say till 4th fourth, fourth century and then over at Vindolanda which is where you know we're heading next just down there in the valley you've got uh, more you know you've got occupation through to the 8th century there but and, uh, and then you've got these uh, little mile castles. This is just one here, these little square, I mean, as you, as the name suggests, little square outposts all the way along. And they, each of those has got a little gate in as well. So, uh, yeah, I mean, a facet, you know, an incredible structure. Amazing in this huge, wide open landscape. Just, I have to say, it's pretty much perfect pedaling past uh, territory, you know stunning riding, amazing landscape, and some of the richest, most sort of dramatic history in the whole of, uh, you know, England, really. And here we go, Mile Castle 37. Heading out. And that's Walk Forest, where we rode up past all the way across there, popped out there. At least the rain's eased off a bit now. And there's the face of the wall. Heading west to east. You can actually see it heading over the crags, right in the distance. Well, I have to say, I didn't think that was going to be as lovely as it was. Uh, the Sill Visitor Centre, just in uh, once or twice brewed, depending which way you come into the village. Uh, there's a story about uh, the, tr the Yorkshire troops before the War of the Roses Battle of Hexham saying their beer was not brewed enough so they demanded it was twice brewed and then they went into battle the next day and won. That's where the twice brewed name comes from apparently. But We thought that was good didn't we? It was very nice. Very, very nice. nice. Yep. Yeah. There's uh, an exhibition centre inside, um, there's loos um, and a really nice um, cafe with an, an observation place at the top so you yeah. can see for miles. So uh, yeah, great place to come and get some refreshments. And uh, there's also bike parking over there with uh, even got a trap pump and some essential tools as well. So a cracking spot to uh, stop en route. Yeah, yeah. really good. Right, Vindolanda next. Vindolanda, here we go. come out, we've got a shadow. 
the first one of them we've had today, but then it's only mid-March, so... And actually, all things considered, it's obviously rained a lot round here. But the riding's all been absolutely fine, so it's a proper all-weather route. But uh, quite a lot of the roads are single carriageway, so look out for passing places and uh, be prepared to run cars off the road when necessary. Oh, look at that building though, look at this! I don't know what this is, but it's a Bobby Dazzler. It's thatch, isn't it? That's a beauty, that is. So here we are in Vindolanda Fort itself and, and the Vicus, the town, uh, actually that bit there. We're in the fort here, but that's the town over there. And there's a bathhouse and they've got a replica mile castle over here. And these are the actual excavations there with all the wheelbarrows ready for next season. And you can see how wet uh, these deposits are. And that's one of the reasons why this site is so incredibly important because the preservation, because everything's been waterlogged and there's no rotting of the organics. Just the things they found are amazing, aren't they, Sarah? Yeah, it, and until you see it in the flesh, you don't really understand how amazing the stuff is. All the writing tablets and the, um, particularly the gladiator's glass, that was Yeah, that was amazing. amazing. But the amount amazing. of leather, there's bits of tent, there's horse, uh, you know, headgear for mm. cavalrymen. Uh, I mean, the letters are amazing. They cover all sorts of things, from sort of party invites to uh, people asking for more beer, people trying not to get a beating from the Roman soldiers. And also, spy missions. Oh, yes, yeah, spy missions, uh, yeah, com complaints sorts. about the Celtic tribes, just all sorts, you know. And preservation is like nowhere else in Britain. You know, I've dug a few sites in Britain and found some, uh, you know, Roman leather and stuff when I was digging in York, but nothing like this. This really is next level. You've got all the fort buildings here, you've got a temple over there, you've got bathhouses. You've got murder mystery as well, haven't you, Sarah? Yeah, apparently in the tavern, um, when they lifted the floor of the tavern, they found a skeleton with um, a knife stuck between its ribs. So you could say it's the first who done it. Yeah, it's a very early Roman murder mystery, <laughs> certainly. <laughs> and just like, I mean, coming up, but this is the main road through the fort. You know, these massive slabs from, uh, you know, nigh on 2,000 years ago, because actually Vindolanda predates Hadrian's Wall, and it's quite unusual because it actually has quite a long occupation history. Uh, there's settlement here until about 800, when the settlement's finally kind of too small to be uh, valuable, any to be valid anymore, but it's got a Christian settlement here as well, and... But yeah, I mean, there are Christian, there are Christian shrines here in the three in about three hundred and seventy, they reckon, in the uh, yes. in the uh, yeah. commander's own courtyard. So you know, it's a multi-faith society. And if you look over there, that little uh, white plinth, you can see that was actually a shrine to the god of weather, which seems appropriate considering the ride we've had today. But I just we can't. I mean, we kind of know it's much better if you just come and see it, which is obviously what you're going to do when you come on this uh, ride and Jen, in all honesty you can't appreciate the scale of it until you're here yeah it really is it's like a it's like an english pompeii it is and what you've got to remember is they've only actually excavated 25 percent yeah that's true yeah so and if you come excavate. here in summer you'll be able to see the uh, excavations live so uh, yeah can't mm. cannot recommend this enough and also the staff are super particularly uh, the last who let us in she was uh, the last in the yeah. admissions office, was an absolute legend. So, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, Vindaland is a big part of the... Unfortunately, Mrs. K, talking of uh, archaic relics, <laughs> Mrs. K's, uh, and it's Italian as well. It, it it's a North Wave <laughs> winter boot that, just like the weather, she was saying, oh, isn't the weather lovely? She then said, these boots have lasted incredibly well while we were having a cup of tea at the sill. And now the sole has completely fallen off, which... It's going to make the last 15 miles back home interesting. Yes. <sighs> Sorry. Oh well, there you go. Another another Roman relic added to the Vindolanda <laughs> the resume. Vindolanda shoe was... Yeah, Vindolanda. exactly. A thousand and one Roman <laughs> shoes. Derelict. Found at Vindolanda. Oh. We couldn't oh. make this up. What did you just ask me, Sarah? Is the Roman road by any chance? I think we can safely say... 
This is Stangate, the actual original frontier on this alignment that the Vindolanda fort was first built onto almost 50 years before Hadrian built his wall. This was kind of a line across from the Solway Forth to Wall's End. Well, it probably wasn't called Wall's End, it might have been, I guess. No, it wouldn't have been, would it? Because the wall wasn't built. Oh, I think I need more energy bars. I tell you what, you needn't worry about pedalling once you've got over the climb from bit out of Vindolanda. We'll be doing about 60 kilometres an hour all the way down to Newborough. So, a lovely fast final furlong. The weather caught us up again now. This is a very, very nice village. Crikey. Again, this route surprising us with extra loveliness and extra history. Certainly a lot more than just the Roman stuff around here. Right, so here we are, back at Hexham Abbey. A little bit wetter than we set off, but so much richer for the experience of this ride. So we've done this in mid-March and we have had some patches of inclement weather, but the amount there is to see on this ride, the fantastic scenery, the wilderness, makes it worthwhile and you don't particularly notice the weather when there's so much to see. Yeah, and also we're actually glad of the hills to be honest because they kept us warm and uh, definitely out on that gravelly section when uh, the weather was really against us at the back of Walk Forest. Yes. We said it'd be a wild ride and it really has it been was. but as Sarah says so worth it. So really hope you've enjoyed this. Obviously it, we're still very early with the channel we're still working out what works and what doesn't so any feedback you've got relating to that be super helpful if you let us know what you like or what you'd like to see or what would help you use these routes you know we put a lot of effort into making them as you know low traffic we've barely seen a car all day have the we cars, and the cars that we have seen have been great yeah so uh and you know big thanks to sustrans for you know helping with the uh, national cycle network a part of it as well but you know, anything, the, any feedback you can give us, massively welcome. You know, it, re it really helps us grow the channel. But for now. I'm Sarah. I'm Guy. And we hope you'll join us again for our next episode of... Pedalling Past. Time Travel, travel Gravel. Gravel. Hey, that wasn't bad for us. Not <laughs> for 70k. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and uh, yeah. Make sure you subscribe, click for notifications and give this a thumbs up like so we get more shares and you know when we're putting the next route up. Thanks very much. I have to say, Hexham's a really bonny looking town. We're going to look round it more tomorrow, but... Looking forward to that. Bit of an explore tomorrow. Stretch our legs.